Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a beautiful day, perfect for some chaos and confusion with an exciting dare head to move many of the Shmi-mobiles. Now, as you know, the Shmuseum is only a matter of weeks away, but we're going to be taking as many of the cars as we can from where they've been stored recently over to a new temporary location to start getting everything ready to take them to my new garage very soon. So today we've got a fair bit of backwards and forwards some driving of multiple different cars in different groups, some photos along the way, but we're going to be taking the Senna and the 675 LT with the G63, then coming back to get the M3, the Ford GT, the Heritage Focus RS, and then also the GT4 and the GTR Pro, plus the Vantage GT8 to join us later. So there's a lot to get sorted, a lot of things going on, some new glasses to talk about as well, but today it's a bit of a shuffle around with the Schmimobiles. It is an absolutely lovely day then to have the cars out in the sunshine for once, thankfully, but perfect then to do this little run backwards and forwards. We'll be leaving the GT4 and the M3 competition here for the moment. We'll come back for those later. On the first run, I'm going to drive the Senna. We'll be joined as well by the LT driven by Benzene Ben, who's just inside at the moment, and the G63, which will be transporting a load of bits and pieces. Now, the guys here have very kindly prepared all of the cars, got them ready. They've been here at Dunt Barn for probably, well, more than half a year now, but we're taking them to a halfway house to make it a little bit easier to get everything set up for the Schmuseum. As you know, I've been planning this garage for years and we are very, very close now. I can give you a bit more information about that later on. But first up, I guess, I think for the first time really ever, we've got the LT and the Senna on the road together. Now I did have them at Spa for an incredible day at Pure McLaren, driving both back to back on the famous F1 Grand Prix track. But out on the roads, I don't think I've ever had them together, despite having had the Senna for about two and a half years and the LT coming up now for five years, believe it or not. And this color in the sunshine with the silver wheels is still looking magnificent. The MSO Orion purple. But let me head inside here at Dump Barn to go and sort out a few things, all of the original Senna parts. We'll load those up in the G and then I guess it'll be time Time to hit the road. The G63 is ready here and we've also got a few of the others, the GT, the Pro and the Heritage RS. They've been brought down off the storage racks and we're going to be taking all of these bits and pieces as well. Some of the original Senna parts, remember all of that, like the wing, the side panel, the wheel arch liners, plus my Kuba tire cushions, those will all be heading over as well. So we need to get some more of those parts loaded up into the G, where in here we're joined today by Mr. Benzine Ben. How Hello. you doing? Long time. It has, it's been a long time. You're back, you're going to be, uh, I think, piloting this today. I am. I mean, when you said I'm moving all of my cars, I kind of hoped you'd have the GT500 here. Maybe a bit optimistic of me, but... Yeah, still in America for now. Actually, I say this, I think you're probably going to be in the LT first up. Not bad. You'll take that. That'll do. All right. <laughs> Perfect. So we need to gear up there, get everything locked and loaded, and then head on out on the way. to be in the McLaren Senna. You can very quickly forget quite how raw this car is. All of the sounds that you hear, the vibrations that you feel, I have to shout at the camera, but how cool to be back on the road in it following the M3 competition up ahead. I think the first time I've seen that car being driven on the road, currently being piloted by Tom, Tom the car dude, who we've seen a few times actually. He helped me find the wreck of my first ever car, the Renault Clio. He helped a lot with the livery as well on the GR Yaris and the Sega Rally, and he's gonna be a lot more involved in the Museum going forwards, and then behind me, we've got the 675 LT being piloted by Benzene Ben as well. But being in this thing, it is so loud, it is so raw, and we were just driving down a newly laid piece of tarmac, and with all of the loose chippings on the surface, they were pinging up, bouncing down the carbon fiber panels on the side, bouncing off the carbon fiber top, and it certainly makes you wince just a little bit. But we're cruising, we're in full auto, and this car is a serious event. It is a serious experience, and today I'm gonna drive this and the Ford GT. I don't think I've driven them actually kind of back to back very often, so I'm quite excited to hop into the GT as well. I'm gonna press active dynamics though, just because it's a little bit more fun. Get a little bit more sound out of the thing. <laughs> you hear what I mean with all of the stones though? They're probably still in the bodywork from driving down that lane we were going down a moment ago. As we cruise through the English countryside, the Isle of Man Green on the M3 looks really cool as well. I love that color, and the back of that car has a lot of presence. The wide arches, those quad tail pipes, and the lip spoiler on the boot lid as well. I think it's a uh, it's a pretty good looking thing. 
thing. Um, yeah, very different car to this, hey? And hopefully get some photos as well as we make our way. And then this, stop start in a car like this. It still boggles the mind slightly, doesn't it? Anyway, <laughs> we're getting towards the next location. How cool is this to have three of the Shmimobiles back on the road together? Really, really awesome. We've made it to the first stop then. The two McLarens are parked up inside. Of course, we're gonna be taking the M3 back onwards from here, but they are inside a brand new storage facility. We are going to have the line of my cars effectively down this wall. So I think I'm gonna park the Ford GT next to the Senna and the Heritage RS at the end. We'll have the two Fords, the two McLarens, and then we'll see how the rest unfolds a little bit later. For the moment, we're not yet plugging everything all back into their CTEX. We will do that with the trickle chargers when we've got the whole lineup here a little bit later on. But this is, well, Oh, very cool, they look amazing. We've just been taking a couple of photos here in this new build barn. A bit of an insight as to what this museum is going to look like. A very, very similar idea, in fact, with this concept of a shell where we're going to begin. So that was fun driving with those two. But now we need to hop back into the M3 all together to head to go and collect the Fords. And well, let's see what else we pick up. This means it is time to hop on board the M3. We're inside here, up front, we've got Tom. How you doing? How you doing? Tom has the wheel of this. We've got Ali on the camera. And um, yeah, I think ben, <laughs> Ben's up front as well. Still so, here. <laughs> okay, we'll cozy in and continue. It is time then for the second run. So a big thanks to Dump Barn for getting all of the cars ready. We're gonna be taking the GT, the Heritage RS, and the M3 and the G. We'll bring the G back next time around, I think, and come back for the Pro and the GT4, all very, very complicated because then we've got the GT8 as well a little bit later on. But I cannot believe how lucky we are with the weather. It is glorious today. Talking of which, the new sunglasses, the Future Wear and Shmi 150 glasses that you see me wearing all of the time, but now the limited edition set with the green lenses and the green Shmi 150 logo at the side as well, only 75 pairs. So I'll put the link to those down below where you can grab them if you'd like. They're carbon fiber. They are very, very light. And well, I love them. I wear them all of the time. So you can get those from the link below. For now though, I guess we need to get set up to continue in the GT with the Heritage RS, getting the two Fords shot together. It would be lovely to have the GT500, but that will arrive here in the UK in the future. Amusingly, just noticed, we've got the Swiss vignette from 2019. That is slightly out of date. That's Tom's BMW, by the way, just lurking there at the moment. The G is loaded up with some of the parts. Lee has kindly done that for us. So we'll get a bit of a shuffle around going, and then head out then. We're ready to roll out then. We've got Puppy driving the G63. We've got Tom the car dude back in the M3. Benzene Ben is driving the Heritage RS. I'm gonna come round, let's take a quick listen, start it up. Not the loudest thing in the world, obviously the stock exhaust, and then I'm gonna take the wheel of the Ford GT. So let's climb inside here. No harnesses, just enough space to do that up. We'll take the normal three-point belts today. Let's get this started. Cool, let's go. It's slightly deja vu from the point of view of following the Isle of Man Green M3, but this time around in the GT, I've got the Heritage RS right behind me. At the moment again, just driving fairly normally. This keeps it in sport mode where I had it obviously before. You can press manual, drop down the gears, and obviously it's a completely different thing. This car is much more road compliant. It's softer, the seats are softer, it jars less. And when you're driving gently, and trying to be a little bit quieter, you can actually hear yourself think. But when you put your foot down, believe me, this gets loud as well. Twin turbo V6, the Akrapovich exhaust that we installed out in the US, I still find it crazy to think that I had this car coast to coast across America. And having done that with the GT500, it's gonna be so cool to have it with all of these in this museum. In fact, I think it'll be fun to take this car and the Senna on the road together to visit the museum to introduce it. So that's my plan at the moment coming up soon. I said I'd talk a little bit more about this. Obviously we've been working for a long time to effectively convert what was a barn on farmland used as a milking parlor, a cow shed in effect, into a supercar garage. That's taken a lot of work in terms of the building itself, the insulation, the lighting, the electrical stuff that's ongoing, the floor. It didn't previously have any kind of fixed floor, the shutters, the doors, and all of this will be covered in much more detail through the Schmuseum channel. So do subscribe to that if you haven't already. Really a big thanks to all of those of you who have already. It's a big number and I appreciate that a lot because we're going to be sharing some very exciting stuff joined by Tom and Ben and more of the team as well to make it all happen. I think it's going to be 
a new side of looking after all of these cars and what goes into managing the garage and the collection going forwards. But like I said, it's not long now. It's been a longer journey than I would have liked. A lot of legal things to discuss, a lot of construction things just taking their time considering the global situation really, materials and labour availability, but it's not long now. We're literally, as I said, talking weeks as opposed to months until it's time to show and share with you for the first time the Museum. But now though, let's uh, grab a few more pics as we continue from here over to the new location to park these up. Out onto some more open roads. <laughs> I love this thing. This car, the amount of memories, the miles, the good times at the wheel of it. And when you drop it down to first gear, that feeling as well, there's so much kick. Obviously rear wheel drive, seven speed dual clutch, 650 odd horsepower. It'd be very hard to choose between this and the Santa. This for me has the storyline. Obviously the specification, the fact that I chose the Allen Mann inspired livery with the red and gold, which is heavily inspired by the drivers that worked or raced for Allen Mann. The fact that back in 1968, hence the 50th anniversary to the Escort Mark I that is the 50 car run of the Heritage RSs, it was in that year that in the BTCC, the Escort Mark I in the red and gold of Allen Mann was actually victorious in the championship. So all of the connections just linking back to one another. <laughs> making sure we get those shots. Yeah, cool times. The lineup is starting to look pretty colourful in here then. The Ford's parked up alongside the McLarens and the G and the M3 currently for a couple of quick photos and the stuff that we've unloaded as well. One problem that has happened, I think, today, this needs a new window. There's been a little chip right here and, well, a few minutes ago it was to here. It's quickly expanding up the glass which isn't ideal. That's gonna need a new front windscreen. Normal thing, I guess, when driving the cars. This end is looking pretty cool though. We might have a shuffle around later on when we've brought some of the other cars back. For the moment, get a few shots, and then I think we'll be jumping on board the G to head back over to collect the rest. We, uh, we need some fuel, Tim. Yeah. We're on, we're on a quali run at the moment. <laughs> we're on <Quali> fumes. <laughs> we need to get this filled up, right? You guys have shotgunned up front. Yeah. Ben's got the wheel, Tom up front. Okay, we'll climb into the back and onwards in the G. It is time then for the last round. So I'm gonna drive the GTR Pro. I want to make sure all is well with that. I haven't driven it for about six months with the GT Black Series coming hopefully pretty soon. There's not a lot of information about that. This will probably be heading onwards. We'll also take the GT4. I think Ben's gonna drive that. He's just at the moment reversing the G63. Tom's gonna to take his BMW, but we need to load this up with some of the other bits and pieces before we can depart with them all. Um, yeah. I guess uh, we'll be on the road in the Pro in the second. Let's get this started. <laughs> Sounds good, all right. GTR Pro next for this little adventure. Yeah, let's go. It might sound strange saying this when I've been driving in the Senna and the Ford GT, but this feels very race car-esque. The suspension, the noises, the sounds, the feel of the thing. And of course, I've had a few good outings with this car on track, including at Donington Park, but also over at the Nürburgring, and enjoyed it for exactly what it's about. But having now done so many more miles in the GTR Roadster, and getting back in this, I appreciate the differences between the two of them and how different they are as cars. It's genuinely fascinating, but this is so specifically track focused. It's like a GT3 RS Visac package, fully stripped out, the creaks from the cage behind, we've got the harnesses and the fire extinguisher and all of that kind of stuff that came with the car. And obviously the specific suspension setup, that's just a very different feel. You don't have a button here to change it and adaptive suspension setup. Of course, sound wise, you hear most of that from the speakers. And one interesting thing about the GT Black series, when it comes to sound from speakers, that I didn't realize is that after the initial press event where we got to drive the car in anger, and I think I was not the only person that complained there was too much speaker piped in sound, they seem to have dialed it back in the customer cars. Now I've not driven a customer car in anger, but friends who have have reported that it's nothing like as bad as we were explaining it originally. So that is one benefit to come out of a media drive. People who are experienced and familiar with these kind of cars being able to give some feedback on them. So that makes me much more excited, although I do still think that we need to do some work to make it even more aggressive because a car like that with a wing like that needs to be. I did think it could be fun to keep the Pro alongside 
alongside the Roadster and the Black Series, but I think we can all agree that's a little bit excessive. So almost certainly this car will soon be heading out of the garage, be heading to a new home with the GT Black Series imminent arrival. I just don't really know when. Anyway, GT4 up in front, kind of cool to see that car. I hadn't really appreciated before how the tail lights are with those horizontal strips, the DRLs, inside the four lights, just like up at the front uh, on the headlights. And obviously still with the G63 behind me, the AMG crew that we have going on at the moment. Um, no, it's still, a, it's still a cool car and it's interesting to compare. But I think the Black Series and Roadster combination, they're enough different that they make sense. And the, even the Pro and Roadster are enough different, to be honest. But they're visually enough different. You know, the GT Black Series looks so much meaner than the Roadster. The Roadster is just a really cool, dynamic, track-focused car that you can still use in a like road trip type environment, as we did recently, putting so many thousands of miles on it. And the interesting thing, actually, is that I've done on the Roadster a thousand more miles than I've done on this in a third of the time that I've owned this. And that third included being away in the US for three and a half, four months or so, which is kind of incredible when you think about it. So this car um, hasn't done all that many miles, to be honest, over the ownership that I've had of it so far. Oh, it's so good. The rear wheel steering, even like this, you instantly feel that. It's just completely, completely planted. Yeah, I've been a big fan of the AMG GTs for a reason. They are fantastic cars. And look what else is here. The noisy one, the GT8. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Always so good. So my dad has driven this over. Benzene is going to park it up for the moment next to the LT. And in fact, my dad's going to take the M3. So what we're going to be sorting out some trickle chargers, cables, plugs, and all of that kind of thing on this lot. The M3 is actually going to be departing early now. So we'll say farewell to that. We'll see it again quite shortly, I think. For the minute, I need to do some uh, helping with the parking up of this thing. Funny situation. The Ford GT is currently parked there. All of the other cars that we've moved out, the Heritage RS is at the end. Because we're doing a bit of a shuffle, we are taking some photos of the various different cars, making the use of the space at the moment before we line them all up in a kind of final configuration later. And yes, in the background, that was the GT8 starting up. So probably a later evening than initially intended before we get all of these plugged into their trickle chargers, but worth it. Probably some cool pictures to share on the Schmiemobiles on uh, social media as well. Jump ahead a bit and we have the cars then all parked up in their new temporary home for the time being. We were very particular about making sure that they are all perfectly lined up at the front ends, the front bumpers, the nose cones you could say of all of the cars in a perfect line. They're also all now, as you can see, plugged in to the CTEC trickle chargers to make sure all of the batteries stay conditioned while they are being left here for the time being. We've got a bit of a random color order, to be completely honest. I basically went with the Heritage RS then thought the GT8 would look quite good next to it, but the orange touches next to the orange car. Then mixed in, well, the one of the white cars against the color, put the GT and the center back together. Of course, these two very special, the two McLarens side by side. The nerdy fact, I'm sure some of you will remember, that the paint color on this, the MSO Orion Purple, has in it the metallic blue sparkle in cerulean blue. So these two always look amazing when they are parked side by side. And then the GT4 is lurking on the end for the moment. The M3 having been taken away, the G63 outside at the moment. And of course, a couple of the other cars that will be brought along here in some capacities and some which will wait until they can all go to the Schmuseum to be together. The SLS is still away having a few bits and pieces done. We're waiting basically for a part that we need to finish off the work that's being done to it. It's just on massive back order thanks to everything going on with the parts supply around the world and all of the parts. We've been waiting for that now for a long, long time. So hopefully it's not far away. The GT500 is over in the US. The M3 is now with my dad. Cars at home, the Taycan, the Yaris, GTR Roadster and this lot, and I've probably missed at least one. I can't even think, I'm so tired right now. No, that's all of them with the G outside. That is all of them at the moment. So yes, that was quite a mission, to be honest, to bring them all over, but we've caught some awesome photos, thanks to Ali through films, and also thanks, of course, to Tom, the car dude, to Puppy, and to Benzine Ben, who will all be a lot more involved in this museum and the things that we're gonna be doing with all of these cars. In fact, fun fact, by the way, They've all got wings. Fixed wing on the GT4, active wing on the LT, raised up active wing on the Senna, 
raised up active wing on the GT, you're supposed to keep it up for storage. Fixed wing on the Pro, fixed on the GT8, fixed on the Heritage RS as well. But do go and head over to the Schmuseum channel. Please do subscribe. Big thanks to everyone who already has. We're going to have some content there very soon with the reveal of the Schmuseum. Don't forget as well, the new sunglasses, the limited edition carbon fiber glasses with the green lenses to coincide with all of the green cars he says in the garage, none of which are here at the moment, but a limited edition set, which is really quite cool as well. For now, I am totally exhausted. We need to get back home, but there will be big, big things ahead. Believe me, really cool to drive in three of the cars and to have some of those opportunities to convoy with them as well. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, I appreciate your support an awful lot. That's it for this time though, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.